If you're a longtime subscriber to my channel, you'll know that I have reviewed the Olight Seeker 2 Pro and the more recently the Thrunite T2 flashlights within the past year. I've gotten a few requests to review these two lights a little bit more in detail and more side to side, so that's what I'm gonna do here in this short review. If you've not seen my individual reviews of each of these lights, I'll have links to those in the description below, as well as links to my social media channels, so make sure you're following me on those sites too. So physically, I wanted to go over some of the differences between these lights, and then I'll talk about performance and night shots. So let's first talk about batteries quick. Both here are using 21700 sized batteries. They both look like this proprietary nature here where you've got your negative contact in the top half and then your positive in the center and then negatives on the bottom. These two sales cells are basically identical. They're the same length and ironically they work in both lights. So let's just take the through night here and shove it in the O light and then show you what it looks like. They, they will work with each light, but the through night here is a very tight fit, and I'm not gonna shove it down there because it'd be really hard to get out, but I can take the O light here and put it in. It's an easier fit, and I can shove it in the T2, and it lights up just fine. Both these lights do feature onboard charging. The through nights is here on the bottom, USB-C, and that is only a USB A to C cable. And then the Olight here does have the Olight's magnetic charging system. The Olight tail is magnetic, as you can see here. Holds onto my knife, no problems. And it mostly likes to hold in the vertical position, either up or down. It doesn't really have enough to support it on the horizontal. Um, and the Through Night T2's tail cap is not magnetic. The bodies here are very similar with the uh, T2s being about two millimeters smaller and it's got this frag pattern milled into the surface here. The Olights is a little bit different. It's smooth, but it's got these rubber silicon grip panels here, kind of ind indents for your finger. I like the way the uh, Seeker 2 feels in my hand naturally better but the through night feels good and works better if you've got on like gloves or something like that. The buttons on both lights are different. You've got a silicon button here that's raised and then on either side you've got eight LEDs giving you battery and power indicators. And then on the T2, you've got this metal button with a LED in the center. I find that the uh, O lights is just a little bit easier to find the button just because of its size. The T2 is a little bit small, but if you've got the clip on there that also kind of helps orient where the button is. The T2 comes with a pocket clip via stock. And the Seeker 2 has one that's optional that you've got to purchase. I don't have one for my Seeker 2, so for me, this is more of a light that I hold in my jacket or something like that, and not one in my front pockets like I might the uh, T2. The T2 actually carries reasonably well as an EDC. It's big, but you can do that because of that deep carry pocket clip. It's smaller overall length and uh, head diameter too. Here are my night shots comparing these two lights. And first up, I've got the through night T2. And this is running that Cree XHP 70 in neutral white. And right now we're looking at turbo, which is 3,757 lumens. You can see it's a very floody beam. Uh, it's neutral white. It's got a bit of a green tinge to it, but works pretty well. And we can shine on the tree here, which will be kind of my close range example here. You can see it's a floody beam and I'll bump back up to turbo here, but we can see it's very even, well lit, but doesn't go very far. Here's the Olight Seeker 2 Pro and it's running that Cree XPL HD LED in cool white in my example here. And we can see it's a tighter beam. It's 3,200 lumens, but it's not quite as broad and it throws just a little bit better with that three optic. We can see the tree outline there. And if we pan up to my tree here, it is just a little bit more focused. Um, personally, I dislike the cool white. It's not as appealing as neutral white and uh, Olight doesn't offer the option like through night does. But I think this beam pattern is a little bit more versatile just because it does throw further and it is, while still floody, it's just a little bit tighter and I prefer that myself. I also like the UI on the Olight a little bit better. It's easier to adjust without resetting and going down. So again, here is the Through Night T2 in neutral white. You can see it's incredibly floody out of that XHP 70 LED. And here is the Olight Seeker 2 in cool white with the, those XPLs, three of them. And we can see it's just a little bit more focused beam and uh, goes just a little bit further in distance, but still pretty floody overall. Uh, overall, very comparable lights in terms of size and feel in the hand. It's just uh, what style of beam you like and uh, your LED preference, I think, is the best way to describe it. 
The performance on these two lights are similar but different. The O light here is on the right and it's got these three Cree XPL HD LEDs, whereas the T2 here is only using a single Cree XHP 70 LED. The difference between these two isn't huge to the eye other than the tint. Both lights are producing over 3000 lumens with the T2 being slightly more at 3757 lumens versus O light's 3200 lumens in turbo. Like I said, visually here, there isn't a ton on a difference in the amount of light they output. The human eye just can't see that difference. But where I do see a big difference is in terms of the tint and the beam shape. The T2 here comes in both a cool white and a neutral white. And I really like that they offer that option. I'm a neutral white fan. Um, the Olight here only comes in a cool white though. The difference in the beam qualities are the T2 is a pure flood and that's all it is. It's got that short wide reflector with a little bit of orange peel on it. And we'll see that in my night shots. Whereas the Olight's um, tri-optic here gives you just a little bit more throw. And I think that's just a little bit more useful uh, in a lot of scenarios. So for that reason, I like the beam quality of the Olight Seeker 2 Pro, but I like the tint of the Seeker 2. You do pay a difference though for that optic in terms of head diameter. You can see the difference here is quite a bit. It's about six millimeters when I measured it. The Thunite T2 is definitely smaller and a little bit better for like EDC. Overall, the runtime here on the T2 is longer by about 50 minutes. And I think that can, can be attributed to one LED versus three here. T2 is also a little bit more aggressive on step downs with the Olight running a little bit more in that kind of medium mode. Turbo runtime is very similar on both lights with the uh, T2 being one minute and 10 on turbo and the Seeker 2 Pro being uh, two minutes. My conclusion here is between these two lights, I wish I could mix and match the best features from each to produce the ultimate 21700 light. The T2 has a little bit more of a floodier beam and a little bit better overall runtime along with tint options for the emitter. But I prefer the slightly more throwy beam profile of the Seeker 2 for general use, but I dislike its cool white tint and it gets hotter and the battery doesn't last quite as long. Both are good lights and I don't have major complaints about either. The T2 is a bit more economical with that LED tint option and pocket clip, and I think it's got a slight edge over the Seeker 2 in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you've got either one of these lights, uh, how you use it, and which you might think is better. I'd love to know your thoughts on this soft topic too. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I'll have links below to my Instagram and Facebook pages, and I will catch you on the next review soon.